welcome back to a brand new episode of Day in the Bay. Now we've got Max and Zoe in today with their convertible golf and we're going to show them how to lift that lighter colour using our gold class wax but also we're going to look at his amazing interior trim. Um, it's all done in fantastic leather so we're going to show you how to clean, condition and protect that. So we've washed it down, we can evaluate the surface and we can actually feel and hear that it needs clay barring. Can you hear it? Like, yeah. Yeah? So. We want to remove that above surface contaminants because we don't want to drive that into the paint when correcting when using yeah. the compound and machine. So we'll get using the clay, we'll remove that above surface contaminants and what you'll notice is it won't really change how it looks. That's when we will then move on to using the compound before waxing. Yeah. Um, it's just going to be nice and simple. Like I say they're not heavy swirls, just light swirls so we just want to brighten that up. So using the compound it contains chemical cleaners to brighten that kind of lighter colour but also the mechanical compounds to remove the swirls and scratches. Yeah. So it's going to be nice and simple. So we'll get the clay ready, then we'll get you doing that, then we'll move on to machine polishing. You have a machine polish? No. No, Only sweet. on my Mark II and it was... Oh, sweet. Tricky. So we're, we're, it is cool. So we'll show you some easy steps to take to make the machine polishing way easier for yeah. you and way simple. It's not, it's not scary, it's not hard. As soon as we get a nice structure and we know what works for the paint, we'll split the car in half. I'll do one half, you do the other. Nice and easy. So we'll use just our regular quick detailer. All we're going to do is a nice clean cross hatch. So it'll be left and right, then up and down. Avoid circles because they're too random. And all we do is it's just gently working the surface and it's just going to safely remove and erode the contaminants that are making it feel rough to the touch. Yeah. So it's going to feel super smooth once we've done this. You can already see it's like picking some bits up. Then once I've done an area, I just knead and fold it and then move on. Okay. Now if you drop it on the floor, then obviously you stick it in the bin because it's going to grab a lot of dirt and from the floor which you don't want to be scratching on the paintwork. So after bringing the car in the bay, we actually noticed it's actually got a few light swirls and scratches in it. So we thought while the car's here, we might as well get the guys playing the car down to remove any above surface contaminants and then using our ultimate compound with our MT320 to remove those swirls and scratches before we really start enhancing that gloss and protection. Just stare down like awkwardly at the camera as I'm talking, <laughs> like the office, just yeah, react. Just like just like <laughs> <laughs> we have noticed there is some light swirls and scratches on here and um, when we got into the bay because it is the tunnel of doom. Um, so we've stripped, uh, we've took off the strip lights because they're predominantly for cleaning and we've left it with the high powered lights which hit the paint and kind of spread out like that which means we can really see the imperfections and swirls and scratches. Now that all sounds all doom and gloom but it's all good we can get rid of them. Now you did say that it's single stage paint which means we have to approach it a bit differently to kind of generic kind of two part paints so it's base coat lacquer. Um, it is a lot softer which means we have to go a little bit less product but we're going to use a firmer pad solely because soft paint and soft pad rub together you just get a muddy finish so we need that kind of rigidity of the pad to kind of cut through it and remove those scratching and swirls. One, two, three, four, I've only got four dots on it. One, two, three, four, five. Sorry. Okay, hon? <laughs> <laughs> Can you count? We're going to reduce our work area so we're going to do small areas at a time but we're just going to do two gentle passes. Now I'm going to stamp out my work area and spread the product. This ensures that the surface is nice and lubricated. Mm -hmm. Now you know we did our cross hatch yeah. motion with a, with a clay barring? Exactly the same, I'm gonna go up and down, left and right, so I'm gonna create a hashtag. Yeah. Nice and steady on the machine, I'm gonna go at about an inch per second, and then I'm just gonna use the weight of the machine itself, I'm not gonna bear down on it. Yeah. I'm just gonna let it glide over the paint. Like, so yeah, when you hold a machine, you don't need to hold on tight, just, just nice and relax, it. Yeah. so you don't feel that all the way through your arm, yeah. by the end of the car, you're dead inside like me. So, nice and chilled. We've got swell and defect removal, four eight to five eight. So I'm gonna go in between those two numbers there. Just gently work the surface. Cool, so we just start with two passes. Solid because we want to start with a gentle approach. Now if we wipe that off and it's still swelling and scratched, that's fine, okay. we can just go at it again. As you can see, that's why it's a treat. You go from that side to that side using the lights. Really yeah, seeing it's taken different. off your top. Yeah, yeah. It's, those cobwebs have been completely like taken down. Now if it's if it's good but not amazing, that's fine. Yeah, just yeah. go at it a second time, then we'll just 
work on the paint okay. like that. But you see, we're just gently reviving yeah. it rather than attacking it hard and fast. shadows of where you've been with the yeah. previous step and because this is soft paint we want to back off each time so we're using a softer polishing pad we're going to use less product less time and less effort so we're really backing off all we want to do is refine the hard work we've just done but also understanding that if we go too much and too much product it's like running your hands through sand we'll always see where we've been yeah and we want to remove that. we want it to look flawless we want it to look like it's not been not detailed. detailed yeah that's it so we're going to move on to ultimate polish which is perfect for refining after compounding and because i want to use very little product i'm just going to put a bit of it in here but then feed it into the pad so there's not too much sitting on the surface so i'm just going to put a little bit on there then i'm just going to feed it in like that so there's not that much on the surface it's just going to get a nice yeah. light glaze like this and then you know how I broke it down into small areas? Yeah. I'm gonna do this now in two. So I'll do this section as a whole, then this section. Okay. I'm still gonna stamp out where I wanna go. I'm still gonna spread it, but I'm just gonna do nice, quick passes. Yeah. Like that. So I'm still gonna do my hashtag, but as you can see, we've got polishing and waxing, three eight to four eight. So I'm gonna go between those two. Because the machine's moving slower, I can move quicker. Yep. That's the whole, if it's moving faster, you need to go slower because you're working the surface. So no pressure on the paint, nice and easy. And that's it, you see how fine it goes mm -hmm. on, nice and thin? That's all you need. And again, Beautiful. <laughs> you take it straight off. And what you'll get is like a nice slick brightness from that. That's just feeding into the paint, mm -hmm. really lifting that colour. You see how dull yeah. and grey that yeah. looks in comparison? Yeah, that's got more colour to it. Exactly. So again, I'm not going to top it up, I'm just going to use what's in okay. there. <laughs> so, so now we've uh, revived and refined the paint using the, the compound and polish. We want to give it a nice, nice warm depth of gloss and protection. So compound and polish will be great for kind of correcting how the paint looks, but they offer no protection. That's why you need to wax afterwards. Now we're going to use our Goldcast Canuba Plus, solely because this is a Canuba based wax. Now Canuba is naturally quite toffee colored, so it gives a color like this a real nice brightness but also it has those polymers and synthetics to make it nice and slick to work with, which means you don't need a lot. Okay. So, we've machined applied the previous two steps. Now we're just gonna do it by hand nice and gently. The key with waxing is less really is more. You wanna barely see it on the surface. Now pinch the top, 
turn it half a turn, that will comfortably do the whole bonnet. Oh really? Yeah, and to make sure you get a nice even coverage, get a section like this and put some stripes on it. And then go over those stripes like this. This way, everywhere gets an equal share. Okay. You get a nice even spread of wax. And all we're gonna do, you know in your previous steps we've done two, three passes, yeah. all we're doing is one single pass. After addressing that the paint needed a little bit more work than anticipated, we clay barred the surface to remove any above surface contaminants. We then moved on to our using our ultimate compound. We use this with our burgundy cutting pad to kind of quickly remove those scratches and swirls. We then moved on to our ultimate polish. Now we use this to enhance the gloss and refine after compounding. Now I've got the guys putting on the gold class wax. Now we're using a gold class wax because it's canuba based, which means it gives a bright colour like this a real nice high level of gloss, but also offers real strong protection. So we want to boost gloss, remove any excess product, but also give it a bit of extra protection. So we're going to use a hybrid ceramic detailer, um, solely because that's going to bond to your existing wax protection and just give it real nice longevity. So we're just going to give it a light mist, like that. And like I mentioned earlier, this is going to settle on any kind of leftover wax residue help it remove that, but also it's gonna give it extra shine and extra yeah. protection. And then we're just gonna get the finishing towel and gently wipe. Like I say, take it to a dry side, puff the opposite way, and that's how if you're at a car show, you can clean the car without getting any lines on the paint. Just gives it a nice flawless finish. Cool. Well, because we've got more leather here than a Harley Davidson convention, we just want to gently work it because it's in good condition because it's pretty much brand new yeah. leather. Um, so we're just going to use our leather balm. Now this is fantastic because it gently cleans, condition and protects. So essentially, if you look at it, it's like the paste wax we just put on your, yeah. on your car. So we're just going to put a tiny amount on the pad like that and just gently work each, work each section of the leather. Okay. And that's it. If you do find that it's a little too, if, it, if there's a sheen on there, all you need to do is get a towel and just wipe it down after that. Okay. Just a spare towel and just wipe it down. That's going to so take that edge that off it. Yeah, yeah, you just work it in, that's it. Yeah. The only time you'd ever buff it is if, you know, like say, if, you, if it's been over applied and there's a bit of a sheen there rather than a satin finish. And that's it. Okay. It smells good too. Yeah, it smells incredible. again for watching another episode of Day in the Bay. So today we've had a great time with this convertible car by lifting up that lighter colour using our gold class Canuba wax but also addressing the leather, giving it good protection and a nice finish using our ultimate leather balm. Now remember to like, share and subscribe and tap that notification bell to be notified when the next Maguire's video is released. Yeah.